should have had Jackie draw on my eyebrows before she left. Because she's good at that shit. Yeah. Fuck. I'm not even joking right now. <laughs> she might. She might do it. <laughs> oh, shit. What it is, BHD Army? It's your boy, Blasphemous HD. I'd rather not talk about why I look this way. <laughs> <laughs> I set the like goal for 15,000 likes and you guys smashed that and I said if we did smash that 15k like goal last week then I would have another story for you guys sooner than later. This is the story about my first time getting drunk. God damn did I fuck this up. I would like to say that the decision making in my first time getting drunk was not as bad as what led to why your boy looks like a for real actual potato head now with none of the fucking stickers on its face. It was still pretty fucked. A lot of you guys already know that I used to go to UNLV. And when I say I went to UNLV, I don't want any of you to think that I actually was enrolled in school there. That's not the case. I went to UNLV solely for friends, vagina, and Super Smash Brothers, you know, because I fucks with Super Smash Brothers. While I was there, even though I wasn't a student, I was invited to all the parties. I got to hang out at all the frat houses. Somehow, I became popular, which made no sense because I didn't even fucking go to the school. It made no sense to me. Damn it, this natural lighting is really, it's really, dude, look at how I look on camera. Come here, look at this. You just want to get me on camera. Look at this shit. We don't look good. Turn up your fucking... We are... We are not doing this right. We are... me feel better that you look so much worse than me. <laughs> I think it's because of your facial hair, man. You gotta, I gotta like shave everything off. I like this look. <laughs> <laughs> I did this on purpose. You know, you know what I look like right now. <laughs> this is, this is really fucked up, man. I, I just, I really feel like I look like one of the new age Ninja Turtles. You see the recent movie? <laughs> yes. You saw that shit? All I would need is like one of those makeshift fucking turtle shells on my back. I could be a crime fighting turtle tonight <laughs> out this bitch. <laughs> I'll be running down the street like wearing the shell and shit. Niggas like, oh shit niggas. Donatello, he looks good. <laughs> but yeah, I digress from the story. It's a Friday night, right? And I am slated to go to this kickback. Now, mind you, this was not one of the bigger parties that I was used to going to so much. This was just a kickback, maybe like five, six fucking people. Now, the reason why I was going is because I met this badass fucking chick at this fucking rally. And, you know, me and her, we was talking. And when I say badass chick, I don't mean Megan Good bad. I mean, it was actually bad the way she looked. That's what I meant by bad. Be 100% real with y'all, man. The bitch looked like Charles Barkley. Like, she was tall and she did not have a lot of hair. But what she lacked in boob size, because she had small titties, she made up for with the length of her forehead. Because that shit was long. She really did look like Charles Barkley. See, I don't want people to think that I've just always been dating bad ones and smashing bad ones. Yeah, there's been a good amount of bad ones. But there's been a few misses as well. I mean, you're not going to hit everything out the park. Some of them might just be a punt. Or in this case, you just get hit with the fucking ball. Because it was painful how unattractive this female was. I was in a drought, okay? If it's any consolation, this chick was extremely willing, which is what made her uh, attractive enough for me to talk to in the first place because she was down to get deed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> which kind of doesn't really count because you can't tell people that shit. 
I couldn't tell you that. Hey, Josh, I just fucked the shit out of Charles Barkley, bro. High five? No? No? Don't you bring me in this. You would co-sign that shit. This bitch looked like Groot from Galaxy Heroes out this bitch. <laughs> you walk up on her in the bar and shit. Ooh, baby, what's your name? She's like, I am Groot. <laughs> Like I had said, you know, she was down and it had been a while, so I was like, all right, cool, you know what I mean? Like, just because I was popular didn't mean I didn't mean I was getting bitches. So I meet her at this fucking kickback, right? We get there, the dudes are there, they're cool, and she's there, but she's there with her friend. I don't know if any of you know this, but the worst thing that can happen to you when you go to meet up with a girl that you talking to is that her friend looks better than she does. It's the worst thing in the world. It confused the shit out of my penis. Cause in my brain, I'm like, okay, it's a sure thing. My penis is like, but look at her friend though. Her friend, unfortunately for me, look like a shorter Stacy Dash. Except without all of the coonedness. That's Stacey Dad's bitch, man. Her personality just ruins how she looks. So we're at the party, man, and they had this big ass bottle of Patron or some other fucking jet blue ass liquor. And the bottle was fucking huge, right? Me, I'd never drunk him before. Everyone there was getting lit and they started drinking. So I'm like, man, fuck it. I'm gonna get white girl wasted out this bitch. This is definitely a good idea. I didn't know what a shot was. I did not know what moderation was either apparently because I'm just taking multiple shots of the shit to the fucking head. We're all cracking jokes. The two dudes are dying laughing. I'm making them laugh and shit. The ugly chick is trying to be on me but I'm trying to pee, I mean be on her friend. You know what I'm saying? Which is pissing both the chicks off. Okay, if you ever want to anger a female, then try to get with her good-looking friends. Because women know what they look like. And they know what their good-looking friends look like. And it pisses them off when you want the good-looking friend. What makes it worse is women stick together. So if the ugly friend isn't having a good time, then the pretty bitch is going to have a bad time on purpose too. So at some point in the night, I just said, fuck these women. I'm going to have a good time with the dudes. No homo, I swear. Like a half an hour goes by and the whole bottle of whatever the fuck it was, Patron or whatever the fuck it was, was gone. And the girls, they look at me very snarkily and they're like, you guys drank the whole fucking bottle? You drank the whole fucking bottle? Oh, because they were like real, real sadity for black girl. Jeez, Shaquisha. Oh, jeez. You boys are so rude. You guys are so fucking rude. Just go get another bottle. Go get us another bottle, guys. You know, we're drunk as fuck, and when you're already drunk, literally nothing anyone says fucking matters. So we're like, you know what? Fine. We're gonna go to 7-Eleven. We're gonna go get some more goddamn liquor, right? Now, unbeknownst to us, this was a whole lot easier said than done. Nigga, I step out in the fucking hallway. Any of you guys remember that bomb-ass action scene from Inception when they're in the hotel and the camera's spinning and shit? Nigga, this is the hallway to me. I step outside, shit's flipping and whatnot, man. I'm like, oh shit, nigga, word? Oh. Anyone ever been drunk will tell you that shit literally does not fucking deter you in the least. Somehow we get down onto the street and I realize I've got to go to the bathroom, okay? The good news is there was a bathroom not even freaking 20 feet away and I didn't have to go so bad as to where I wouldn't be able to hold it. The bad news is I'm motherfucking drunk. And what's even more funnier is that I'm so drunk, all this fuck shit's happening, but I wasn't drunk enough to not remember the shit. I remember pulling my balls out. In the middle of the sidewalk, and it's like 1 o'clock in the morning right now, but since it was Saturday, there's people walking back and forth, I've got my dick out in the middle of the fucking sidewalk, pissing. 
What made shit even worse is people were like walking past covering their kids' eyes. One dude stopped me, he's like, dude, you put away your goddamn cock, man. No one wants to see that shit. Unbeknownst to me, when you get drunk, nigga, you get a lot of that fuck everything in your system. Fuck shit. You feel me? I figure I could fix the situation and mediate everything, help all these people's discomfort at my penis being loose out this bitch, is by just ushering people around me. I got one hand peeing in the middle of the sidewalk, another hand I'm ushering people around me. No, go ahead, go. 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 Looking like an ass naked traffic director out this bitch. Just please, just ushering people around me. No, go, man. No, go ahead and go. And anyone who has ever been drunk knows how much you pee when you're drunk. Now, after I got done pissing, luckily enough for all three of us, there was a 7-Eleven across the fucking street, right? Now, when we get in front of the 7-Eleven, all I had to do was go up to the goddamn front counter with the liquor, show them my ID, and it would have been easy. But you gotta remember, man, we're fucking drunk. This is not normal shit. I've yet to have seen a movie with as foolish of a plan as what we came up with on the spot in front of that goddamn 7-Eleven. I still remember the shit. The plan was for one of my homies to distract the dude at the front counter so that he wouldn't see me when I got to the damn freezer, opened it up, and got the liquor out. But once I got the liquor out the freezer, my friend was going to miraculously decide to just leave and not distract him anymore. And then I was going to walk up to the counter and pay for the liquor and present my ID. What sense does this make? I don't know how this guy did not know I was hammered. We get the liquor, man. We go back to the room. We fucking get toasted some more. The women are so fucking pissed off. And it's fucked up because for some reason, even when you're drunk and you know shit's going bad, in your mind, it's still all good. So these women are giving me the meanest of fucking looks. Like, I fucking hate your gut. Like, ew, you fucking disgust me. In my mind, I'm like, oh, see, I knew you were down with the smash and tag, which is a very obscure reference for sex. So the females fucking left. I stayed for a little bit, you know, and then I decided to walk home. Now, I used to live in University Park Apartments, right? Now, anyone who's ever lived there or goes there knows it's literally like a five, ten minute walk from UNLV. I felt like I was floating. I was so drunk. It was all bad. I don't even remember getting to my apartment. The last thing I remember was walking down this fucking big ass pathway towards the University Park Apartments and just everything was spinning. I was just fucked. I guess I just fucking blacked out at that point and woke up sleeping on my living room floor with roaches crawling all over me. Anyone who's ever lived at University Park Apartments knows that those apartments are real. Lee roach infested. Like it is not a good look. You know, I didn't have any furniture, I had just moved in like a week before, had no money, so I was just sleeping on the floor. Maybe the roaches thought I was like really, really big food or something. Now the funniest part of this goddamn situation is, you guys remember how I said this bitch looked like Charles Barkley? Like a bald Patrick Ewing out this bitch? She was really, really fucking unattractive, like didn't even have boobs. No boobs at all. Tell me why, three, four days later, right, I get a call from the Charles Barkley looking bitch, and she's like, yo, hey man, we're having this party tonight. I'm like, oh shit, yo, that's what's up. She's like, yeah, it's gonna be fucking awesome, dude. There's gonna be a whole bunch of fucking people, man. We're gonna get lit as fuck. Yeah, man, it's just gonna be so fucking cool. I'm like, all right, yeah. And she's like, yeah, can you buy me drinks for the party and I'll pay you back. Have you ever talked to someone who was telling you about an awesome event that they were throwing but they actually didn't want you to go to this event? You ever had that shit happen? Huh? Cause I'm sitting there talking to this bitch and the whole time I'm just waiting for my invite. You know, and she keeps telling me how awesome it is and all this other shit. You know what I got? This bitch wanted me to buy her the liquor for the party and didn't even have the money for the liquor. This bitch wanted to give me an IOU. Where I'm from is basically, hey, buy me liquor. You'll never see your money again. Which is basically what that shit is. Please tell me what the fuck I would look like buying all the liquor for a party that I'm not invited to? Could you see that shit happening? 
huh? Show up at the fucking party and shit, hey, I got a liquor, here you go guys, yeah! And I'm like, oh my god, thank you! <laughs> and close the door in my face, like, really, nigga? Really, nigga? After that, and based on the night that we had before, because I could still remember how everything was going with her that night, I knew that she just did not fuck with me at all. She's just like, fuck you. Because she was mad when I told her no. I told her, I'm like, what the fuck? Hell no. And she was offended that I was not willing to pay for her liquor for this party. So yeah, man, needless to say, she never called me ever again after that. And like four months later, I called her. Because I was bored. I decided to talk to her and shit. Not going to lie. I was trying to get a blowjob. But, you know, called her and shit. I was like, yo, you know, what's up? She's like, who is this? Have you ever had that uncomfortable situation? Huh? That uncomfortable fucking talk with somebody where they don't know who you are? Because they deleted your number off their phone? That's how much they disliked you? Huh? Because that's what happened. She deleted my phone number out of her phone. And that's why she didn't know who I was. So, like, mind you, she's being cool, like, oh, no, who is this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, no, okay, it's cool. It's Maurice. The minute I told her who I was, her attitude changed. She just started talking down to me like I was the biggest fucking sack of shit in the entire motherfucking world. Just hated my fucking guts, man. After her cursing me out for about two or three minutes about how much of a sack of horrible piece of shit I am and I'm bald. Yeah, after all of that shit, I would have to say the worst part of this fucking story is anybody out there remember Tupac? You remember that one song? One of my favorite songs by him? Everywhere I go, I see the same hole. Y'all remember that song? Huh? That song used to be my shit. That is legitimately how I can describe my situation with this female. Cause I swear to God, every single month, I would go somewhere and this bitch would be there. I remember I was dancing at the club with my girl and a bunch of her friends. Look over and this bitch is staring at me. This shit happened at least 15, 20 times. And it's really funny too, because I would be having so much fun with other people that you could tell that she wanted to come over and like talk to me. She would have no friends with her. No one. And one or two times, this bitch for real started walking towards me with the look in her eyes like, oh, I'm a drum up conversation. You know, maybe we could be friends because I'm really bored and life sucks because you seem real fun. And I would always give her like the worst fucking stink face. Ooh, mmm, mmm. You know what I mean? Like, don't talk to me, bitch. And that is what happened. No, I never smashed the Groot looking bitch. As fucking drunk I was that night, I'd have did that shit. But, uh, but yeah, man, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the story. This is your boy Blasphemous HD. Make sure to comment, like, and don't subscribe. If we reach 15,000 likes on this video, then again, you know, I will make sure to have another story out a lot sooner than later. Because you guys already know, y'all wouldn't have gotten this story for at least like another fucking month and a half, two months. Y'all already know how long it takes. So, hey, hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, uh, Twisms. Uh, I miss my eyebrow hair. We didn't even save the fucking eyebrow hair, man. We can't even glue it back on if we wanted to. You would glue it back on? I don't think that would work, man. That's not how eyebrow hair works. You don't know shit about You mean that. to tell me it's cool for women to draw hair onto their faces, but a nigga used some of his own used eyebrow hair back onto his fucking eyes and you know, I'm fucking up. What's great is the before and after pictures exist. <laughs> oh. Fucking shit.